Hi everyone. If you're a Windows user and would like to try Mac OS before getting a Mac, you should consider installing on your PC via a virtual machine first, like what I have here. I'm running this Mac OS Sequoia on my Windows 11 PC that has a 6 cores CPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM via a VMware virtual machine. As you can see here, I can run the popular Mac OS apps, browse the internet, as well as access shared folders on my Windows 11. It is fully functional, and overall it feels quite smooth. The only minus point so far is that Mac OS does not support VMware 3D acceleration, so we cannot have some of the Mac OS advanced visual effects, such as the Genie effect and the dynamic wallpaper. All right, now let me just show you how to install Mac OS Sequoia on your PC, and let's begin with the hardware requirements. So to be able to run Mac OS Sequoia on a virtual machine, your CPU should have at least two cores and support virtualization. Memory-wise, your PC should have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM because Sequoia requires at least eight gigabytes to run reasonably smoothly. While for the storage, it's strongly recommended that you use SSD with at least 80 gigabytes of free space. And then for the installations, you will need four pieces of software, namely VMware Workstation, which is now free, VMware Tools, VMware Auto Unlocker for Mac OS, and the Mac OS Sequoia ISO file. All these software can be downloaded from the links in this video's description. To download the VMware Workstation and the VMware Tools, you may download them either directly from the Broadcom's website or from my Google Drive. If you want to download them from Broadcom on the VMware Workstation download page, click Download Now and you'll be brought to the Broadcom sign-in page. If you don't have a Broadcom account yet, you will need to register for an account with your email address first before you can access their download page. For my case, since I've already had one, I will just sign in with my email address and password. On my dashboards menu, click my downloads, and then click free software downloads available here. Look for VMware Workstation Pro at the end of the list, expand a Windows version, and then click the latest release version number. If asked, accept the terms and conditions, and then click the download button on the right. Once the download starts, go back to the free downloads page, and then click VMware Tools. Click VMware Tools 12.x and then click 12.1.0. Again, if asked, accept the terms and conditions, and then download the VMware Tools packages for Mac OS. All right, the next file you need to download is the VMware Auto Unlocker, which we will use to patch the VMware so that it can run Mac OS. So open the Auto Unlocker's GitHub page, click the latest release version on the right, and then click the Auto Unlocker.zip to download the file. And lastly, to download the Mac OS Sequoia ISO file, Open this GitHub page, click Mac OS Sequoia, and then download the torrent file. You will need to use a torrent client such as BitTorrent or MuTorrent to download the ISO file using this torrent file. All right, so once all your downloads are completed, you should have these four required files. And now before you begin the installation, there's one preparatory step that you need to do, which is to enable the virtualization on your CPU through the firmware or BIOS settings. To check if your CPU virtualization is enabled or not, open the task manager. Show the Performance tab, and then click CPU. You should find your virtualization status at the bottom of the window. If your virtualization is disabled, you will need to enable it through your UFI BIOS settings. To enter your BIOS, besides using your PC's BIOS key during boot up, you may also use one of the several other ways as I show in my other videos. For this tutorial, let me just use the command line method. So open the command prompt as an administrator, type shutdown, dash R, dash FW, dash T0, and then press enter. This will restart your PC and boot it into UFI BIOS. On your BIOS settings, look for the Intel or AMD virtualization technology and enable it. Then save the changes and restart your PC. All right, now we are ready to install the VMware workstation. So double click the VMware workstation installer to launch the setup wizard and then simply follow the instructions on the Setup Wizard dialogs. Once the installation is done, click Finish, and do not run VMware Workstation yet. Now extract the Auto Unlocker file, and then run the Unlocker application. If your Windows Defender Smart Screen gives you a warning, click More Info, and then click Run Anyway. On the Auto Unlocker window, 
Simply click Patch to patch your VMware workstation so that it can run Mac OS. Once done, close the Auto Unlocker app. Now launch VMware Workstation, and we should be able to create a virtual machine for Mac OS. So on the home screen, click Create a new virtual machine. On the new virtual machine wizard, select Typical, and then click Next. Select Installer Disk Image or ISO file. Click Browse, and then look for your Mac OS ISO file. Ignore the warning message, and then click Next. Select Apple Mac OS, then select Mac OS version 15, and then click Next. On the next dialog, you may change your preferred virtual machine location by clicking Browse and then click Next. Leave the recommended settings and then click Next. Click Finish and your newly created virtual machine should be shown under My Computer on the Library pane. Alright, before we can install Sequoia on this virtual machine, we will need to configure it further. So now click Edit Virtual Machine Settings. On the Virtual Machine Settings window, first adjust the virtual machine memory size to your preference. Then on the processor settings, set the number of processors to 1 and the number of cores per processor to 4. If you set the number of processors to a value larger than 1, you will get a warning message telling you that the guest operating system, which in this case is the Mac OS, doesn't support multiple virtual processor sockets. And then if you show the CD DVD settings, you should see the Mac OS ISO file that you have specified earlier on the new virtual machine wizard. And lastly, make sure that the USB controller is set to USB 3. Then click OK to close the Virtual Machine Settings dialog. Alright, the last step of configuring the virtual machine for Mac OS is to change and add a few more settings directly on the Virtual Machine Configuration file. To do that, right-click the Mac OS Virtual Machine under My Computer, and then click Open VM Directory. On the VM Directory, look for a file of type VMware Virtual Machine Configuration. Right-click on it, and then edit with Notepad. Now open the link to the VMware Virtual Machine additional settings for Mac OS in this video's description. We will need to change the values of these two parameters and add five new parameters to the VM configuration file. And if you're using AMD CPU, you will also need to add these new parameters to your configuration file. So go back to the configuration file on Notepad, search for Board ID Reflect Host, and change its value to false. Then search for Ethernet Zero Virtual Dev and change its value to VMXNet3. After that, copy the five new parameters and paste them at the bottom of the configuration file. If you're using AMD CPU, you will also need to add the AMD specific parameters to the bottom of the VMX file. Once done, save the file and close Notepad. All right, so our Mac OS virtual machine is now fully configured and ready for Sequoia installation. So go back to VMware and then click power on this virtual machine to boot it from the DVD drive, which contains the Mac OS Sequoia ISO file. Select your language and then click the right arrow button to continue. On the Mac OS Recovery Options dialog, select Disk Utility and then click Continue. On the Disk Utility, select VMware Virtual Hard Drive Media and then click Erase. Type Mac OS as the hard drive name. Leave the other two options with their default values and then click Erase. Click Done, and then you may close Disk Utility. On the Mac OS Recovery Options dialog, select Install Mac OS Sequoia, and then click Continue. Click Continue one more time, and then click Agree to accept the terms of the software license agreement. Select the Mac OS disk drive, and then click Continue to begin the installation. Once the installation is complete, you will be guided through setting up your Mac OS. So select your country or region. And then if you want to select your preferred language, click Customize Settings, and then simply follow the instructions. On the Migration Assistant dialog, click Not Now. And then when you are asked to sign in with your Apple account, click Setup Later, and then click Skip. Accept the terms and conditions of the Mac OS Software License Agreement and then create a local account and password. Once your local account is successfully created, simply follow the instructions to configure the location service, your time zone, and etc. All right, so here it is, Mac OS Sequoia on a virtual machine.
But we are not done yet. As you can see here, the macOS screen resolution is still fixed and does not automatically resize when I resize the VMware window. In addition to that, the desktop background is still plain white. To enable the resizable and full screen resolution, and also some other features such as the drag and drop between the host and the guest operating systems, we will need to install the VMware tools that we have downloaded earlier. So now go back to your Windows File Explorer and extract the VMware tools zip file. Then open the extract folder until you find an ISO file named Darwin. To install this VMware tools, go back to your Mac OS, right click the install Mac OS Sequoia DVD on the desktop, and then click eject install Mac OS Sequoia. Then go to the VMware's library pane, right click Mac OS, select removable devices, then CD DVD, and then click settings. On the CD DVD settings, click connected, and then browse the Darwin ISO file that you have extracted or downloaded just now. Then click OK and the VMware Tools ISO will be shown on your desktop. Now click Install VMware Tools to launch the setup wizard. Select Install for all users on this computer. Enter your password. And then click Allow. On the System Extension Block dialog, click Open System Settings. Then on the Security Settings, Allow System Software for VMware Inc. Enter your password and then click Modify Settings. When you're asked to restart your machine, do not restart it yet. Close the System Settings window, and you'll probably find your VMware Tools installation failed because it was blocked by the strict security setting you saw earlier. But don't worry, because you just need to redo it one more time, and this time it should be successful. Once successful, restart Mac OS, and you should have resizable screen resolution. As you can see here, the Mac OS display resolution is automatically adjusted and can be set to full screen mode. Now for the plain white desktop problem, it is because Mac OS does not support the VMware 3D acceleration, and therefore it cannot use dynamic wallpaper, but it can still use a static image for the desktop background. So right click the desktop, and then click change wallpaper. Choose your preferred picture from pictures at the bottom, or you may use your own picture later. All right, so here it is, a fully functional Mac OS Sequoia running on Windows 11 via a virtual machine. If you want to be able to access folders on your Windows 11, open the Mac OS virtual machine settings, show the options tab, and then click shared folders. You may choose to make the shared folder always enabled or enabled only until the next power off. Click add, and then simply follow the add shared folder wizard. Then click OK to close the settings window and then restart the virtual machine for the new shared folder settings to take effect. After the restart, go to the Finder menu, click Go, and then click Computer. Then click VMware Shared Folders, and you should see all your Windows folders that you have shared with this virtual machine. Lastly, if you want to make your windowed virtual machine look neater, you may hide the library pane and the status bar. All right, so that's how you can run a fully functional Mac OS on a PC. I hope you find this tutorial useful, and thank you for watching.